Hey, welcome. This is Joe from the Cell Phone Geek. Hey, uh, this video, um, I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible, but I'm going to show you uh, kind of real quick here on how to build a custom computer. Uh, it's pretty easy, pretty easy putting it all together. Um, as you see, here's the process, the uh, motherboard here. I had to move these uh, screws around here that you see. There's one here and here and then up here and over there and over here. You have to line those up with the holes that are in the motherboard already pre-drilled. Because what you want to do is you're going to set this down onto the computer here on the tower, and then you want to tighten those screws down so they don't move around. Um, and actually, I was looking to see if there's any screws, but it doesn't look like there are. Oh, and before you can do that, as you see, there's a big hole here. I've got this uh, piece here that you got to put in. So I'm going to put that motherboard off to the side here, take this down to the package. I'm going to pause the video, and then I'll show you here uh, in a second what's going on. All right, so basically all I gotta do is just take this and this snaps into place here, like I'm doing here. All right, so that's snapped in. So now that's on here. And then when you take this, and you gotta make sure that all the ports were lined up on that piece you put in there. So when you take this here, and you uh, put it in here, it should all line up here fairly close. I know it's not exactly because it's gotta be tight. And then when you put the screws in, they'll all be tightened down and then it won't go anywhere. I'm looking, hold on one sec. All right, so then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to get your screws here, little Phillips screws, and you're going to try to uh, hold the motherboard in place and put the screws in. Make sure that everything is lining up here. Actually, i got to pop out of these for the sound. Didn't realize they weren't popped out. Sorry about that. Let's see. I don't want to waste too much time here because I know you guys have important things to do and you don't want to see me just keep stopping here and putting all these screws in. All right, so those are popped out. Just make sure before you do it like me where you check everything and make sure that everything fits here on the other side. I apologize that you're not able to see it, but I'll show you here at the end of the video. I'll do a, a view of it, 360-degree view of the computer and then you can see it from there what I'm talking about with them lining up. Uh, so I try to put them in um, by hand, kind of loose by hand, just to make sure that they uh, start and then go from there. After I put a few in, I like to take the screwdriver here and and then put them in kind of snug but not too tight yet because you want to make sure that they're all going to work. So let me put these three in kind of loose here and then put in a couple more here I kinda just drop it over the hole as long as the the hole lines up I just drop the screw over the hole and go from there and of course there's wires and stuff in the way so just try to keep those out of the way like I try to set them here off to the side on the outside of the case usually works pretty good all right, put these screws in here pretty snug. Make sure that they go straight in, otherwise you can have problems. So you don't want to strip the screws or the threads that are down inside the computer that you're putting this into. I know you're not putting the motherboard right up against the case of the computer. It's in that, those gold screws I showed you, but it's pretty close. Alright, so I'm tightening these all down here because I got all the screws in. Make these all nice and tight. You don't want this motherboard to move anywhere. Especially once you get more and more stuff in the computer here, it's going to be harder to get to these screws. So you want to make sure they're nice and snug now. Nothing moves. Alright, so that's in there. Nice and solid. Sorry, I dropped the screwdriver. All right, next thing uh, I would do is uh, you can put in the RAM. I usually put the RAM in next, so you have to pop these little clips back, like so. Then you take the the RAM, snap it in, and then these clips snap back over, which I'll show you here how that goes. Take this little guy here. Here's your RAM. Line it up into the track here where that little part is that's cut out. Make sure that lines up and then just push down and it should click if you listen. 
as you can tell, it just clicked in. So the first RAM is in. Cut open the second one here. Put that one in. It's really a process of this isn't too bad. Uh, as long as you know what you're doing, you don't want to break nothing. You always want to make sure that you don't over tighten stuff because that could cause problems later on. Uh, also, cable management is very important. Okay, so I'm going to push down on this again real quick. And I clicked, so those are both in there, seated in there very well. Perfect. But uh, yeah, cable management is very, very important. You want to make sure you do cable management as you go along here, which I'll show you that at the end as well. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is uh, uh, I can either do the, uh, of course, the power supply here and then also the processor, but I'm going to put the processor in first. I'll Give me one second, and I'll get the processor. All right, so I went ahead and I uh, put the power supply in here. It's just four screws over on this side. Screw them in, and all the cables are here. It's still going to cord together. Uh, the processor I put in, all you got to do is there's a lever here. You pull it up. Take the processor, and on one corner of the processor, there's a white triangle in the corner. You line that up with the triangle that's marked on the on the motherboard, which is over here in this top corner, top left corner, from uh, my view. Uh, when you drop the CPU in, it uh, will drop in farther down because there's all those pins drop into all those holes. And then once that sits in there, you can try to rock it and make sure that's in there solid. Uh, you can pick it straight up, and it comes right out. But make sure it's in seated in there. And then you take the arm and then you pull, you push it back down and it snaps into place and you can hear what happens is those uh, teeth come down into through those holes and then when you flip that switch, it pushes, it bends those uh, prongs over and locks them in to the motherboard so that way it's able to uh, be used and transfer electricity. So that's why it uh, has to lock in and also that way so it doesn't fall out, you know, it's fall out. Okay, so the next thing you have to do is take your heat sink, which uh, normally comes with the CPU, but it doesn't always, which is just your processor. Um, you get your heat sink. Uh, make sure that the thermal compound is here on the bottom. Uh, mine is, uh, doesn't have any thermal compound on it currently. If it does and uh, you don't want any thermal compounds on here, there's uh, a little trick you can use to take the thermal compound off real easy. You could just use some WD-40. Spray it on a, on a napkin or a paper towel or a cloth, and then you just wipe it over the thermal compound here, and it'll, ta it'll take it right off with no, no problems. So it's nice and clean back to the metal. And then uh, you'll have to provide your own thermal compound, like I have this little tube here, which is, which is what I'm going to use. This is the Arctic Silver 5, which is uh, what I recommend. It's the best stuff out there. It's uh, a little expensive for the tube. It's like $10 for so this little tube, but it's good for five or six computers. Uh, then you got to do is just squirt it on over, well, you don't put it on here. You actually, uh, what I do is I squirt it onto the CPU here, and then I use my little spatula, my little spatula right here, and then I uh, smooth it out over the whole uh, processor. I uh, try to get it as equal, as even as possible without letting it ooze over the sides of the processor. And then I take my heat sink, and then there's a, a hook here, well, this is just a hole, but there's a, two hooks on your processor. You hook it on the back side, and then this arm thing, you unlatch. You unlatch it here. You hook it onto the other hook, and then you flip this latch over, and then it smashes this down on top of your processor to make it solid so it doesn't move anywhere. And the reason for thermal compound is for uh, heat distribution. So there's no uh, airflow in between because your processor gets really hot really fast. So you put the thermal compound in between, and that makes uh, the bond between the processor and the heatsink to uh, remove all the heat from the processor. Otherwise, if there's an airspace in between, the processor will overheat, and then your computer will shut off because the processor overheated. So that's the reason for that. I know this video is starting to run pretty long. It's about 10 minutes already. Um, go ahead, and uh, there's some cords here in the, in the that's part of the shell of the computer. For these, you just have to uh, find what they're labeled. Like this is U USB on it. So then on the bottom of your motherboard here, you have to find a slot where it says USB, and then this would plug into that slot. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm trying to find. Oh, here it is. USB. Usually it's located here on the bottom, but not always. Like on this, I'm on here currently. It's a little higher up.
it just depends on your layout of your motherboard. So it's plugged into there. Then this says audio, so this would plug into the audio slot on the motherboard. Uh, let's see here, which I found it. Just have to line them up. There's uh, one pin is always missing, so you just have to find the one pin that's not there and line them up, and then you just push it down, and it should snap on top. It, like, clicks. doesn't really snap. There's nothing for it to snap in, because you can just grab it and pull it right out if you need to. Uh, and then, of course, you have this. Uh, usually, sometimes they're all connected like this, and sometimes they're not. They're all split. Uh, ba basically, what it is is the power button, the reset button, and the uh, and two lights. The power light letting you know that the computer's on, and the other one is the light letting you know that the hard drive is uh, being written to. Um, I don't recommend hooking up the reset switch because you're not really supposed to reset your computer. You're really supposed to hold down the power button and then uh, wait about a minute and press the power button and turn it back on. Um, but that's what we'll be explained in a different video. So I don't plug in the reset switch. And then you just have to find their label on your board again. Sometimes it's hard to uh, read them. But, uh, yeah, so you just have to go and find them. And then try to match up the positive and negative if it's labeled. If not, uh, do your best and just guess. And then uh, if it doesn't work, then pull it out and try it any other way. Oh, and then usually there's a speaker also. There's a spot to push in your speaker to hook in the speaker. Let's see, I think I just hooked those in the wrong one. Yeah, I did. This is labeled on off. So you gotta move this power button over here to this one here. Sometimes they're a little uh, tricky or confusing, but uh, just gotta read it and then you'll figure it out as you go along. And you shouldn't have a problem. And that one goes on here. And this one goes next to it. Right here. So that puts all those on. And then I didn't put on the reset switch, so that will just stay off to the side. Which uh, you can zip tie it off to the side, which is what I'll show you in another video of uh, cable management. But right now I'm just showing you how to build a computer. Um, and then basically we just have to put in the hard drive and then the DVD drive and hook up the power and then we'll be good to go here. I'm going to have to make this a uh, two-part video because obviously we're running out of time here. So I'm going to end it here and then I'll start the next video of where we leave off.